friends today i would be discussing the functions and secretions of stomach this topic is uh, discussed with the following outline first i will give about the physiologic anatomy and histology of gastric glands then i list the functions of the stomach then i describe about the motor functions then i talk about the secretory functions then i talk about the gastric secretions the various composition then i will talk especially about the acid secretion and i mention about the regulation of gastric secretion that with the cephalic gastric and intestinal phase and uh, uh, i mention about gastric disorders and then i deal with the peptic ulcer diseases so this is the outline of my today's lecture and uh, brief anatomy or physiologic anatomy of the stomach so now here is a esophagus which makes which joins with the the stomach it's a j-shaped structure and uh, this is stomach you have the esophagus and the stomach have some uh, junctions what are called esophageal sphincter or lower esophageal sphincter and uh, uh, anatomically there may not be a uh, muscular uh, ring or a muscular layer for the lower esophageal sphincter but uh, physiologically there is a presence of uh, uh, this uh, sphincter and then we have this dome that is the that forms the fundus then uh, we have the body of the uh, stomach and this is the portion of the stomach which is known as antrum and this is a pylorus so these things are uh, described here this is a esophage a lower esophageal sphincter fundus body antrum and the pylorus the pylorus has a definite uh, the muscular layer you have you can just see that uh, that sphincter so this sphincter is very well controlled uh, by the neural and humoral uh, things and uh, that would make the uh, intermittent uh, uh, release uh, as required into the duodenum and uh, if i have mentioned here this lower esophageal sphincter prevents the regurgitation of the gastric contents into the esophagus because uh, the environment here is different environment here is a uh, different that is it is more acidic it's not acidic uh, so that me that means it is injurious to this portion then this fundus this this particular ball this area uh, forms the uh, the area for uh, the holding the food holding the food or storage of the food then the body secretes the uh, acid pepsin and the protective mucus and in the antrum we have a thick musculature in addition it secretes the mucus the pepsin and the gastrin in the order so these this is the uh, primarily a basic anatomy of the um, stomach now uh, coming back with the histology of the gastric glands uh, and these gastric glands you you will see the entire uh, uh, stomach here here is for is into several uh, rugae or folds and each of these folds are making a, a the pit like structure so they dip into the uh, submucosal layer and then they form the uh, glands so this this is one of those uh, typical glands uh, wherein it, it dips down it dips down here and in this uh, uh, i have all the all the cells located to start with on the surface we have the uh, the mucus cells these are uh, uh, mucus cells here then comes uh, another layer of mucus cells which are regenerating type then we have the parietal cell uh, that is a acid secreting cell that that is also uh, secreting the intrinsic factor then we have uh, these uh, uh, these cone shaped or uh, pyramidal shaped cells, these are enterochromaffin cells uh, which secrete histamine, 5 hydroxy, tryptamine, and so on. Then you have in the bottom 
these uh, chief cells or a pepsin uh, secreting cells or a, a pepsin cells uh, so these are in the bottom here so now you we have another type of cells uh, which is not shown here these are called d cells maybe they are there in the entrum and uh, the entral area of the this thing and um, the cells in the in the these are the cells here these are the cells uh, some of these cells they migrate towards the surface and some of these cells migrate to the bottom or the pit pit of these things this is how and this is one of the typical uh, gland that secretes the acid and pepsinogen and this is known as a oxyntic gland now we look into the different type of uh, cells in this oxyntic gland so now what are those first is the mucus cells these are the the surface cells here these are the surface cells they secrete mucus and the bicarbonate then we have another mucus secreting cells in the neck and these are stem cells these are regenerating type of cells these cells uh, try to replace these uh, the mucus surface cells or they may uh, come down uh, deep into the uh, pit then we have the parietal cells uh, these are parietal cells which are acid secreting cells these are also known as oxyntic cells and we have the chief cells here these are peptic cells which secrete a pepsinogen or the pepsin these are chief cells then we have a g cell uh, g cell here um, uh, i'm not uh, uh, it is not shown here uh, some of those cells uh, maybe in the in the area they are secreting gastrin then we have another type of cell known as a d cell which secretes a somatostatin these are the various uh, cellular components of the gastric glands the cellular components vary from the areas of the uh, stomach maybe fundus mostly mucus in the body the mostly acid and pepsin in the entrum pepsin and some amount of acid and mostly gastrin like that uh, there may be a variation in the uh, type of secretions or type of glands uh, distribution then we move on uh, to the functions of the stomach uh, now uh, we what are the functions of the stomach the stomach these functions can be divided into four one motor functions that is the motility related then secretory and digestive functions that is regarding the secretion and the digestion and then the endocrine functions that is performing the endocrine aspect of the uh, either for the local level or at the systemic level and the absorptive functions these are the the four important functions of the stomach now we see one by one so the motor functions uh, include the storage the motor function is performed by the fundus and one third of the uh, body so say for example this this component this component a circle circle or circular ball like things i am making this is the fundus and the body and this is this performs the motor functions and uh, uh, they what is their function is to have a receptive relaxation allow the entry of food and accommodate the food and store the food so that is the uh, three different uh, though they, it allows the entry receives receives the food and relaxes and then uh, it will uh, uh, try to hold the food or the store the food in the place and this is aided by this physical uh, aspect of the hollow viscous that is a laplace law where it, the pressure within the lumen is equal to uh, twice the tension divided by the radius of that particular uh, uh, lumen so now uh, you can so that means the pressure does not change as much if you change the radius because it is universally related then comes the second function or second motor function is uh, mixing grinding and preparing the kind 
and this mixing the grinding and preparing the chyme is the enteral enteral component the in between the body body is just holding again a holding place or a storing place uh, wherein it tries to uh, mix with the whatever the little contractions they, they have the mix the food uh, food and then try to uh, make the enzymatic and uh, acid digestion okay so now here in the mixing grinding and preparing the chyme is done by the enteral portion this enteral portion and some part of the the lower body portions and uh, the enteral and two-third body they will have a phasic contractions and these phasic contractions propel or push the food or food material which is a semi uh, semi liquid it's not fully liquid it is semi solid type and now the it will push this thing against the closed pylorus so just like this now once it is pushed against the uh, the closed pylorus these particles uh, which are of a larger size uh, they they would be they will be hitting that surface and they're coming back there will be a repulsion and in this process of uh, uh, the waves uh, which are pushing and uh, the repulsion as it happens in the the tidal waves of the sea so they will just go and come back during this process uh, these uh, bigger particles will be uh, divided into uh, smaller particles already these uh, bigger particles and the smaller particles are in a liquid media which is containing an acid and the the pepsin pepsin or pepsinogen so they will be uh, digesting so that means so that is how the mixing the grinding and preparing the uh, chyme then the emptying so this pylorus uh, uh, empties uh, uh, at intermittent levels it cannot it is not open all through it holds the food and uh, it releases the food as uh, it, as it is required or as it's necessary necessitated by the duodenum suppose if it releases the food in the duodenum now duodenum has to deal or duodenum and the intestine has to deal with the the chyme which is entering in that compartment so now what is to be done there because they have to uh, neutralize they have to digest and so on so that means they will intermittently release so this uh, this release mechanism is controlled by the stomach and by the by the intestine these uh, liquids uh, in, the, in the emptying process uh, the liquids move faster and uh, the lipids uh, move slower intermediate is the solid uh, particles so of course there are no solid particles and they may they may be liquefied in the process these are the motor functions uh, to say it again the storage the mixing grinding and preparing and the emptying as required here i mentioned about how these are uh, made into a smaller uh, fragments <laughs> now how the pyloric splitter is regulated i briefly mentioned some factors which regulate the the pyloric sphincter the the pyloric sphincter is constricted because of the presence of the cholecystokinin a hormone uh, from the first part of the uh, from the duodenum which is necessary for the secretion of the pancreatic enzymes and the release of bile and the secretin it is uh, for this uh, release or secretion of the uh, the bicarbonate uh, content of the pancreas uh, pancreatic enzymes so then our uh, then we have a gastrin which is trying to regulate the pyloric uh, the stomach activity the gastrointestinal uh, in, uh, gastric inhibitory peptide that inhibits uh, then the vagus or vagus mediated vagus itself coming from the upwards that will make a constriction the relaxation of the sphincter takes place because of the contents of the stomach that is a fatty meal the fat fatty meal will inhibit the um, or open uh, or relax these things um, then somatostatin then uh, peptide fatty meal relaxes the the stomach wall itself so that means it does not propel much uh, so that it is holding the stomach for a, a longer time because uh, the in the next segment uh, they have to be digested a somatostatin uh, released from a d and uh, 
peptide YYY is also a inhibitor of this um, the pyloric sphincter. Then uh, the, in its, the stretch on the intestinal segment also inhibits the uh, inhibits the 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 decreased stretch, decreased stretch uh, inhibits this thing so that there's a release. Enterogastrone, uh, nowadays the enterogastrone, it may be the somatostatin or peptide YY, or previously it is known as a enterogastrone. This hormone, uh, still we, we believe that there are some other hormones or peptides which, which regulate this thing which is released from the intestine that uh, relaxes the uh, pyloric sphincter and the sympathetic uh, stimulation. Now, what are the secretory and the digestive functions? The secretory, the main secretory function of the stomach is the secretion of acid. It secretes uh, an acid which is very strong. That means uh, uh, the it can it can digest the uh, the metal uh, or the iron. So it is so such a strong. But uh, and this this um, this much a concentrated uh, HCl is secreted uh, from the stomach. The function of this HCl, I will I will cover how the HCl is secreted in the uh, subsequent slides. Now let us see what are the functions of the HCl. HCl is necessary. It hydrolyzes uh, as, as a acid. It it is a hydrolyzes all the food materials, the protein, fat, and carbohydrate into a, a smaller. Uh, uh, parts particles and also hydrolysis so they, they they liquefy so then it will not allow the growth of the organism so that means it will try to prevent the growth of the organism uh, it acts as a disinfectant so that means whatever uh, the consumed whatever ingested uh, is uh, is being sterilized by the acid the exception for this thing is helicobacteria who, who grow or these organisms grow in an acid medium. So then activation of the uh, pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is a precursor of a pepsin, a, an enzyme necessary for uh, uh, the digestion of the protein molecules. So this activates the HCL, activates the uh, pepsin. And uh, HCL uh, uh, makes the helps the absorption of iron the forming the uh, ferritin and uh, ferritin molecules and even the iron ferrous to uh, ferric state or a ferric to ferrous state and then uh, we have uh, naturally it helps the absorption of iron and b12 and others in the absence of a, uh, the hcl the iron absorption and b12 absorption are hampered so that is about the hcl then the there is a lot of 90 percent of the secretion or 99 percent of the secretion is water this water nearly we have about 1.5 liters of uh, uh, gastric secretion this this volume of fluid uh, liquefies uh, the the bolus which has come from the esophagus uh, liquefies uh, make into a more uh, fluid um, than before then we have an enzyme pepsin again it is from the pepsinogen and which digests the protein to peptones and some, some peptides uh, especially in uh, uh, ruminants uh, renin is one of the uh, one of the enzyme which is present to digest the the casein uh, or digest the the milk protein to casein so in infants uh, in infants it is a uh, mentioned in uh, something some books uh, that is why i have put it in the red that renin uh, though we don't know the existence of renin in human beings but uh, it will help that I, it will help to digest the milk protein to make it as a uh, casein casein is further dealt by the pepsin the lipase the gastric lipase that would uh, begin the the fat digestion the lipid small molecules and the triglycerides are broken down broken down into uh, monoglycerides so then we have another important factor the intrinsic factor known as a castles intrinsic factor this castles intrinsic factor is necessary for the absorption of the vitamin b12 
in the uh, distal uh, uh, intestine. So that means uh, the the intrinsic factor uh, attaches with the extrinsic factor that is vitamin B12 and the combination of these two things are uh, absorbed from the intestine. So that means it is uh, an important factor for the, uh, the absorption of the vitamin B12. Then mucus, uh, mucus is secreted all through the all through the uh, layers of the uh, stomach. It provides the protective layer because uh, it has to prevent the digestion by the acid and by the pepsin. And uh, there are other hormones. There are a number of uh, gastric hormones and chemicals uh, secreted by the stomach. These mainly these hormones include uh, gastrin, histamine. 5-HT, prostaglandin, uh, ghrelin. Ghrelin is another hormone that I will uh, come in the next uh, slide. Now, if, if I am uh, mentioning about uh, the physical and chemical characteristics of the meal, which is uh, uh, this is uh, which is in the stomach. So that means input, what is coming to the stomach, it is a bolus coming from the esophagus. And this bolus is emulsified and in made a suspension it is made into a suspension the particle size is uh, less than two millimeters here in the bolus uh, it is a uh, five millimeter or greater so then in the bolus or the the entry from the from the in the bolus we have the triglycerides which are not uh, dealt with they are like that they are into small pieces and these small triglycerides are digested to small triglycerides and uh, uh, small extent with the monoglycerides and uh, some of the free fatty acids are formed this is a very small amount uh, in terms of the fat digestion the protein digestion uh, begins here in the in the stomach the protein is there which is there in the bolus and the protein digestion begins here because of the uh, pepsin and which converts them into peptides and amino acids the starch digestion uh, which has started in the by the salivary amylase, which is present in the bolus. So inside the starch digestion continues, but outside the bolus layer, or once before it is mixing with the with the acid, because uh, the optimum pH for the salivary amylase is about uh, uh, six point eight, whereas the uh, pH of the uh, pH of the uh, gastric juice is. Uh, one or even less so you can just see that it does not favor the star digestion however what is whatever has been initiated a small fraction of oligosaccharides must have formed that's only a priming then large amount of water and ions are added up in the gastric juice so this large amount of water and ions especially uh, the hcl hcl and potassium uh, they are necessary necessary that is the output here then we have the ph it is seven at the time of input and now it is one so there is no intrinsic factor there is intrinsic factors so this is the difference between what is there in the esophagus or what is coming from the mouth and what is in the stomach that is uh, the output of the stomach output of the stomach which is entering into the duodenum now what are the endocrine functions the stomach uh, uh, performs one systemic endocrine uh, secretion that means uh, ghrelin is a hormone secreted from the stomach uh, and this ghrelin especially regulates the hunger and satiety so this uh, ghrelin levels uh, they increase during fasting and these ghrelin levels activate the hunger and satiety centers in the hypothalamus so that we, we just uh, uh, start uh, go for the food intake. So after the ingestion of the food, the ghrelin levels lower down and then uh, the satiety takes place. So this is a systemic uh, hormone. And besides that, besides the ghrelin, we have a gastrin which is necessary for acid secretion and we have the vasoactive intestinal peptide that enhances the gastric activity in terms of the secretory and motor then gastric inhibitory peptide inhibits the secretomotor activity somatostatin inhibits the gastrin activity also inhibits the 
uh, and relaxes the uh, pelvic sphincter. Now, absorptive functions. What are the absorptive functions of the stomach? Stomach performs the absorptive function. It absorbs water because uh, the mucosal surface that absorbs water by the osmotic uh, gradient because when when uh, these things uh, when some food item, items uh, just like sodium and bicarbonate uh, when they are absorbed along with that osmotic activity water may be reabsorbed and uh, uh, these are the electrolytes uh, mainly absorbed that is sodium and bicarbonate it is uh, in the process of secretion of hcl HCL, secretion of HCL, and because of the, the increased bicarbonate content, the blood, because it is entering into the blood, the blood pH uh, increases uh, what is called alkaline tide. So that means uh, after a heavy meal, uh, you will see that uh, the blood pH increases, uh, and this process is known as uh, alkaline tide. And uh, we have other lipid uh, soluble molecules uh, may be absorbed to a small extent. This is not the place for the lipid absorption. Intestine is the place, but the some amount of absorption is taking place. The alcohol, yes, it is being absorbed. These small molecules are being absorbed because it is a lipid soluble one and it, absor it is absorbed. And the drugs like aspirin are absorbed. So that means there are certain chemicals, drugs, and uh, nutrients are absorbed but the stomach is not primarily for the absorption of the food items or absorption of the things but still it performs that may be substantial if you are looking at the alkaline tide then comes the composition of a gastric juice the gastric juice daily we secrete around one to two liters approximately 1.5 liters on an average so now this gastric juice is uh, uh, contains 99% uh, uh, or even 99.5% of water the remaining part 0.5% is solids in the solids we have inorganic ions and organic ions the inorganic ions include cations sodium potassium magnesium hydrogen ions hydrogen ions becomes the major major one and uh, because of the hydrogen ions uh, we have this uh, ph uh, uh, 1.0 the anions like a uh, chloride because uh, uh, chloride is a company with hydrogen ion there and then we have the phosphate and the sulfate so these are uh, the contents of uh, inorganic contents of the gastric juice the organic contents uh, uh, include the pepsinogen and uh, the active form is pepsin uh, from the peptin uh, peptic uh, cells of the chief cells so this is uh, digesting the proteins then we have a lipases known as a gastric lipase uh, that digest the uh, small fragment of the uh, small fragment of the uh, lipids the mucus uh, yes uh, that is very much required to protect the uh, it, it provides the uh, layer a protective layer uh, for the entire uh, stomach uh, to prevent the auto digestion then we have intrinsic factor this intrinsic factor is necessary for the reabsorption of b12 moving on further so what are the various steps in the formation of hcl because how hcl is produced uh, in the stomach that's that's the question now here i have taken up uh, uh, things i have made i have put the number of steps here the circles one two uh, three four five uh, six i have mentioned them so let me start the reaction the reaction starts with the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide which is by these cells the meta, these are metabolically active cells they produce carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide because uh, uh, there is a water there and uh, the carbon dioxide and water in the uh, they will uh, form the carbonic acid carbonic anhydride so that forms the h2co3 in some of the books you will see that uh, this uh, h2o is divided into h plus oh and uh, uh, oh are uh, interacting with the uh, co2 
that is uh, it's co 3 so something like that anyway so h2co3 but carbon carbonic anhydrase enzyme which plays an important role this is the step one that forms the h2co3 now h2co3 disassociates uh, into h ion and hco3 ion now the h ions are pumped uh, into the lumen this is the lumen of the uh, gastric gland into the lumen and uh, this is the pump and it is in exchange with the uh, potassium this is the uh, potassium hydrogen pump or what is known as a proton pump proton pump so that means uh, h ions are pumped for a, a mole of or for a mole of h ion which is pumped and the same uh, one uh, the equal uh, mole of equimolar uh, potassium is pumped in so that means uh, this pump operates uh, for the it exchanges in fact it the hydrogen ions are exchanged for the potassium ions the potassium ion comes here and potassium ions are added to this potassium pool inside the parietal cells that is the first second step that is a secretion of h ion by the proton pump then number three step is because uh, in this uh, the bicarbonate levels because the only the this is a proton pump the k k or this thing bicarbonate pump what happens the hco3 is pumped uh, into the into the uh, blood uh, the bicarbonate moves in and uh, then the in exchange the chloride enters into the cell now because there is a greater chloride content because the the one of the anion this this anion is pumped there and this anion the chloride anion is coming there and now this chloride moves into and through the chloride channels it pumped out so that electroneutrality of this compartment is maintained okay so that means the chloride pump and the hydrogen ions and the chloride ions they they just form the hcl they are in the ionized form in the lumen they are in a, a very high concentrations now number three number four is the potassium now what happens the potassium uh, is pumped here because the potassium is pumped here because the potassium is exchanged this is the pumping of the potassium and this potassium is coming from the uh, number five step the sodium potassium ATP is pump so sodium potassium ATP is pump where sodium is exchanged sodium is pumped out and in for that the potassium is uh, uh, that is the sodium potassium pump that is number five number five since there is a hydrogen ion there there is a chloride ion there there is osmotically active uh, component you just look at the potassium is recycled almost the potassium is recycled here if you are if you are looking at if you are looking at the potassium is uh, uh, getting out here and it is recycled and this potassium is coming here through the sodium potassium pump so now uh, because of this uh, osmotically active substances are there uh, through the osmosis uh, the water moves in it is a sixth step these are the steps for the hcl secretion from the parietal cells now this it's h ions uh, the secretion of this proton pump is uh, regulated by the number of inputs these are uh, plus these these activate or these this will produce uh, uh, the uh, act activation of this pump uh, uh, through the uh, some protein kinase mechanisms so now acetylcholine again uh, the m2 receptors and the gastrin which activates uh, acetylcholine receptors and histamine receptors and uh, that would uh, and itself activates the proton pump and histamine activates the proton pump and uh, that will increase or that will hasten or activate the its its ion secretion whereas the prostaglandins uh, they inhibit uh, this is inhibitor inhibit the uh, ion uh, secretion or this uh, proton pump okay so now with this uh, brief idea about the various steps involved in the uh, formation of h ion i just want to say uh, one there is a formation of bicarbon uh, carbonic acid by the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide uh, carbonic acid dissociates into hydrogen ion and co3 hydrogen ion is pumped uh, through the proton pumps then the bicarbonate is pumped and exchanged for a chloride ion 
then the sodium potassium ATPase uh, uh, pumps the potassium inside and that adds to the and that is pumped back into the uh, lumen uh, for uh, exchange with the proton pump and the water moves in uh, by the uh, osmotic activity. The acetylcholine, gastrin and histamine uh, are stimulatory to the proton pump, the prostaglandin or inhibitory to the uh, proton pump. So the, this is uh, what the uh, steps in the synthesis. Now come back here. The same thing uh, I, I will not explain. And the same thing you can just see that uh, the formation of uh, HCO3 there, uh, CO2, CO2 plus uh, OH plus H. So this forms the HCO3 and the H ions. H ions are exchanged in reference to potassium ions. And uh, the, you just see that H ion concentration in the lumen or canalic it is 155 milliequivalents, very, very, very high. And um, so then the potassium is relatively higher than uh, the plasma. Uh, in plasma, it may be five, it may be uh, three times that. Then uh, uh, sodium ions, uh, sodium ions, uh, so you just see that the sodium ions are here somewhere around 140, 140 milliequivalents. Here it's only three milliequivalents. So because the sodium ion is pumped back into the system, this is the, the circle. The chloride ions are uh, increased tremendously. It is uh, 173. And uh, the exchange of the chloride ion is with the, the bicarbonate ion. So that means this compartment has more bicarbonate. So that is what uh, the thing here, the concentrations in the lumen, you can just see that water is there because of the uh, greater H ions, chloride ions, and then uh, potassium ions. Now, I have already briefly mentioned about the regulators of the, uh, regulators of the acid secretion. So the, this is a proton pump, and uh, this is the energy dependent process where uh, process where H ions are exchanged for potassium inside. That then means uh, HA, this is the lumen, this is what uh, happens, and this is uh, governed by the protein kinase C, uh, protein kinases. These protein kinases are activated by, activated by acetylcholine, gastrin, and histamine. So now that's what I have shown here. This is again uh, uh, GS, uh, G protein coupled, G stimulatory, and uh, these are direct acetylcholine muscarinic receptors and uh, the gastrin, again, uh, through the calcium mediated uh, mechanisms, they will activate the protein kinase. Here, it is activated through the adenyl cyclase, uh, cyclic AMP dependent mechanisms, they activate uh, and they will enhance the, the um, secretion. If you are looking at the prostaglandin here, uh, prostaglandin activates the GI of the G protein. And uh, this GI inhibits uh, inhibits this uh, cyclic uh, AMP production. And if this cyclic AMP production, that prevents uh, the acid secretion. So what happens in case of the uh, aspirin? Aspirin uh, blocks this. Aspirin uh, is a prostaglandin synthase inhibitor. It possesses the prostaglandin synthase inhibitor. And this aspirin uh, stops this. If there is no inhibition, again, that would has the acid secretion so that may produce the ulcer so that is uh, irritation or uh, the gastritis all those things uh, uh, this is how the aspirin is related aspirin or any other uh, uh, drug which uh, uh, blocks the prostaglandin uh, uh, synthesis or what are the prostaglandin uh, uh, synthase inhibitors these are called uh, uh, the non-steroidal uh, energetic agents now comes the uh, the regulation of the gastric secretion. The regular gastric secretion is regulated in uh, three phases. Uh, one cephalic phase that is even before the beginning of the uh, entry of the storm, food in the stomach or the bolus in the stomach. The gastric phase after entering into the stomach and uh, uh, intestinal phase after release into the intestine. Intestine. So that means uh, from the esophagus, from the stomach itself from the intestine. These are the three regulatory, and we see each one of them. In the cephalic phase, uh, uh, the gastric secretion occurs even before the food enters the stomach. So this may be conditional or 
a, a reflexive reflexive in the masticatory or a swallowing reflexes may activate uh, uh, the the secretion of the stomach as a preparatory preparatory arrangement so i'm telling it's a, it may be conditional through the conditional reflexes uh, the conditional reflexes operate because of the sight smell thought and the taste of a food the unconditioned reflexes uh, uh, they include the mastication and uh, swallowing so they will they will uh, enhance the activity that reflex activity which is uh, initiated uh, by the glossopharyngeal nerve or uh, uh, glossopharyngeal and uh, vagus nerves uh, they will uh, enhance the vagal activity in the stomach to secrete the, uh, to secrete uh, the acid and uh, pepsin so one more aspect of the cephalic phase is that uh, you have a more appetite because uh, you want that means you you want to eat more there will be a more intense stimulation so that uh, you are prepared to eat more so now cephalic phase uh, if you are looking at the sight the smell thought and the taste of a food so they are concerned with the the uh, activity that is uh, generated in the cerebral cortex especially the cortical areas uh, which are governing the uh, conditioning reflexes uh, say for example if you are seeing the site the occipital occipital cortex and the association areas the smell olfactory then uh, uh, thought that is the prefrontal cortex and the taste the somatosensory area so all these things are clubbed together especially that part of the that part of the brain that is the limbic system in the amygdala the prefrontal cortex also joins because joins all these things together the prefrontal cortex and amygdala uh, they they are uh, trying to uh, form the part of the limbic uh, system or limbic activity they would govern the activity of the hypothalamus and hypothalamus uh, uh, in turn in turn provides the output to the the medullary centers uh, uh, governing the vagus especially the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus and uh, now the vagus is activated and the vagus reaches the stomach and enhances the secretion the cephalic phase again if i repeat it starts with the conditioned unconditioned reflexes involves the centers in the brain that is cerebral cortex the prefrontal cortex the amygdala and hypothalamus amygdala is a part of the limbic system and they will activate the vagus in the medulla and they amount they um, the amount of secretion by the cephalic phase is about uh, 20 percent of the total secretion you can see more uh, on this uh, uh, going to my youtube uh, presentation on the uh, cephalic presentation gastric phase the gastric phase is the major uh, portion or it is it amounts for 70 percent of the total gastric secretion that means the the major quantity of the uh, secretion comes from the gastric phase so now the gastric phase has a uh, uh, three important uh, components one it has uh, uh, it is generated by the vagal vagal reflexes so these vagal vagal reflexes if i were to tell so that means a distension or uh, the mechanical or a chemical uh, components in the stomach activate the vagus uh, uh, vagal afferents of the stomach and these vagal afferents uh, uh, carry impulses to the uh, nucleus uh, tractus solitary uh, in the medulla and the nucleus tractus solitary activate the the dorsal motor nucleus and then that would be providing the vagal effort so this is a vagal, vagal reflex so that means uh, whatever generated from the stomach either from the mechanical in the sense uh, stretch the presence of food in the stomach or the chemical nature of the food in the stomach they activate this uh, vago vagal reflexes then this is the first component the second component the 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 myontric plexus is situated in the stomach or being activated because of the presence of the food and the presence of the other uh, or secretion of other uh, factors 
So the secretion of other factors includes those, uh, the humoral factors like a gastrin, histamine, serotonin, uh, and so on. So many, many other chemicals are released uh, during the, during the uh, activation of the myentric plexus. And uh, now these myentric plexus uh, are uh, getting triggered and activated because the fastest trigger is coming from the vagal efferents uh, that sets on the role and uh, then uh, involving both cholinergic and non-cholinergic excitatory inputs. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, uh, cholinergic and uh, non-cholinergic excitatory inputs, uh, they would activate, uh, they, continue to, they continue to secrete the uh, gastric uh, juice. Then comes uh, because uh, these are uh, if you are looking at the any anything the neural activity is a sort of a phasic and a lasting for a short period of time. This will be maintained by the the chemicals that is a gastrin. Uh, gastrin in turn uh, releases or activates histamine and uh, that uh, again uh, secretes. So so these things uh, go on go on they repeat and go on and on and they will uh, increase the both the secreto and the motor activity of the stomach and uh, it accounts as i have mentioned uh, for more than 70 percent of the total gastric secretion then uh, here i am mentioning how this gastric acid fits in uh, secretion are operated through i have just mentioned here one vagal vagal reflexes the local reflexes and uh, the chemical uh, components. So you just see that the nerve here, this is the vagus. This is the vagus. Uh, this is the vagus. This is the vagus. Now, these vagal inputs are coming from uh, the this thing, maybe started with a catalytic phase or the initial phase, then uh, it will be activated because of the vagal afferent inputs uh, going to this uh, dorsal motor nucleus. Uh, they will uh, stimulate. So that means if you are uh, if you are taking this thing, uh, vagus activates the parietal cells that secretes acid. The vagus activates the um, the enterochromaffin cell uh, that would uh, uh, activate in that will release histamine. Histamine activates the the, um, the peptic cell. These peptic cells are a cheap cell which releases pepsin, and also this histamine activates this parietal cell. And now this uh, uh, vagus ACH here I am mentioning this will activate the cheap cell directly. So that means vagus it activates both P and C cheap cells. Now this uh, activates this uh, the gastrin secreting cells. Now this uh, uh, gastrin secreting cells in turn release gastrin. Gastrin, if you are looking at, it activates on both the, on uh, these uh, P cells. Then uh, this is a P cell and this is the cheap, cheap cell that is a peptic uh, secreting cell and the ECL cell. And then uh, we have the T cell somatostatin inhibits it. Here in this box, I have mentioned how the vagus is activating. Vagus activates the P cell. This is a P cell. This is the C cell. This is cheap cell. And G cell. This is G cell and the ECL cells. So that means it activates all the cells in the gastric glands. The gastrin, if you are looking at it, is a hormone. So this hormone uh, will activate uh, these three cells, the P, C, and uh, ECL. P, C, and ECL. Now ECL cells uh, in turn activate uh, P as well as uh, P, P cells as well as uh, C cells. So I have forgotten to type the C here, P as well as uh, C cells. The somatostatin it inhibits the it inhibits the G cell. This is in broad about uh, the regulation of the gastric secretion. It has set by the cephalic phase, then it is continued by the vagovagal reflexes, and the vagovagal reflexes uh, uh, sets the ball roll of the local myentric reflexes, and these local uh, myentric reflexes, uh, uh, governed by the cholinergic and the non-cholinergic components, uh, are further triggered or continued or sustained by the uh, hormones uh, or the humoral factors like a uh, gastrin and histamine. That is uh, uh, what uh, the uh, the gastric phase is concerned. Now coming back to the intestinal phase, the intestinal phase uh, account for only uh, less than 10% of the total uh, secretion. 
because uh, uh, it's in this phase because already the gastric phase is there uh, small slowly the gastric emptying begins uh, now it will not enhance the enhance or add over the gastric phase so now it will initiate uh, because there are gastrin releasing uh, uh, glands in the uh, duodenum they will release gastrin gastrin in in turn activate the gastric secretion that is accounted for the uh, 10% or lesser amount of uh, uh, secretion this is one part this is excited the chyme is the product of digestion in the stomach and that enters into the duodenum and initial segment that triggers this first is the excited reaction then it also has an inhibitory component so that means the entry of a chyme it distends the in, uh, the duodenum, duodenum, and uh, this chyme contains the hydrogen ions. This is uh, uh, acidic. This is acidic, uh, and it has a partially uh, broken down products, uh, and it is uh, uh, almost hypo, hyper osmolar, hyper osmolar, uh, and uh, it has uh, some irritating factors like H ions and other things, uh, or if there are there something, so they all uh, will activate. What they do, they activate the enterogastric reflex. The enterogastric reflex is that reflex which is activated in the intestine um, myentric uh, plexus, that is the neurons present in the uh, myentric plexus, uh, that in turn modulate the sympathetic and parasympathetic activity uh, to inhibit uh, the gastric secretion. Or gastric activity. I, I, I take it as a, a gastric activity as a whole. So that means uh, enterogastric reflex uh, that uh, inhibits the gastric activity in terms of the secretion, in terms of the release. Because uh, uh, the, the message is, uh, message is the presence of acid, the presence of products, the protein breakdown products, presence of hyper osmolar uh, chyme and uh, irritating. So in addition, this they also because of the presence of this chyme, they trigger several intestinal hormones such as secretin, CCK, GIP, that is the secretin, cholecystokinin, uh, gastric inhibitory or uh, peptide, uh, vasoactive inhibitory peptide, and somatostatin uh, to inhibit the gastric secretion. This is about the intestinal phase, and it has both excitatory and inhibitory actions. These actions would be uh, basically promoting the or uh, inhibiting the motor activity. This activity is uh, basically increasing the secretory activity. Now, uh, this is uh, what is been uh, uh, shown here. It is taken from uh, Guyton, and uh, you just see that this is a cephalic phase. You can just this is summarizing the regulation of gastric secretion, the cephalic phase. So this is this sight and the smell and uh, the uh, whatever the taste of the food uh, that will be activating that scapalic phase then uh, we have a gastric phase where it is being governed by the vagal reflexes the local reflexes and the humoral factors then we have uh, this um, the intestinal phase where the nervous mechanisms that means uh, the enterogastric uh, reflex and hormonal mechanisms uh, which are operating, they will try to modulate the gastric secretion. Now, what are the various gastric disorders? Uh, one, one, of, one of the gast gastric disorders is a gastroesophageal uh, reflux disorders. Uh, the there is a spelling mistake there. Gastroesophageal uh, reflux disorders known as uh, GERD. This is one of the things where the reflux of the fluid from the gastric content so would uh, produce uh, the irritation, inflammation, and ulcers in the in the, the in the uh, esophagus, and uh, that will uh, uh, the that will alter uh, uh, the uh, the irritation and uh, the uh, the problem problem. Then comes the gastroparesis. That means uh, the gastric uh, activity, motor activity is a diminished gastroparesis. A gastritis, whenever we consume a food containing uh, um, irritants, 
the large amount of acid is secreted uh, what we call as acute gastritis and you have consumed a very spicy food or you have consumed a large amount of alcohol or you have consumed an aspirin or whatever that would produce a gastritis so that is an acute phase then we have a peptic ulcer disease that i would uh, uh, cover uh, dyspepsia is a condition of uh, what is called a uh, it is related to the uh, digestion that is a secretion that is a secretion and uh, the gastroparesis uh, put them together you have the dyspepsia then we have a condition known as a chlorohydria or hypochlorohydria that is a diminished activity of the uh, parietal cells or the acid secreting cells that produces or uh, decreases the acid secretion. Then we have a pernicious anemia. A uh, pernicious anemia is uh, uh, it's an autonomous uh, uh, this, this is a um, uh, disease, autoimmune disease in which the the uh, cells uh, which are secreting, especially the uh, parietal cells secreting the intrinsic factor, they are um, uh, destroyed or there is a uh, antibody against the intrinsic factor that destroys whatever may be the cause uh, that would produce the intrinsic factor deficiency that would uh, result in the deficiency of the vitamin B12 absorption in the intestine and the person goes into a, a megaloblastic anemia or macrocytic anemia that's known as a pernicious anemia so gastrinomas gastrinomas are a condition or acid secreting uh, tumors uh, in the duodenum stomach uh, and uh, small intestine now uh, i will just only uh, deal with the peptic ulcer disease here and uh, this is about the peptic ulcer disease where gastric and duodenal ulceration is primarily due to breakdown of the barrier of a barrier uh, this barrier is provided by the mucus and the uh, bicarbonate secretion there is always a balance between the acid pepsin and the mucus the mucus is uh, trying to uh, prevent uh, the digestion by the acid pepsin now if this mucus secretion is uh, diminished uh, that will uh, break down or uh, that will uh, uh, result in hydrodigestion or if the uh, if the acid secretion or the pepti, uh, pepti acid pepsin secretion is greater then also the mucus is not able to neutralize this thing or prevent this thing so then there may be a autodigestion the causes may be due to number of causes the helicobacteria infection is one of the thing that disrupts the barrier this bacteria grows in acid medium drugs like aspirin i, I mentioned about uh, uh, the aspirin there so that means uh, the uh, the prostaglandins uh, uh, inhibit uh, inhibit the uh, proton pumps now uh, aspirin what it does it it prevents the uh, prostaglandin synthesis so it is it has a, a prostaglandin synthesis inhibitor so if the inhibitory effect of the prostaglandin is not there on the proton pump so that means that increases the activity of the proton pump and that increases the acid secretion so most of these non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs what we use it what we call as nsaids uh, these nsaids uh, whatever uh, for uh, uh, treatment of the pain especially the arthritis or uh, any other pain or even fever so uh, they they will uh, they will act by increasing the uh, or preventing the prostaglandin synthesis thus uh, they will uh, uh, decrease uh, one decrease the mucus secretion and uh, the hco3 secretion and also increase the acid secretion that would help form the uh, the uh, acidity or uh, increased uh, autodigestion the stress of any nature the physical or uh, the the infectious or whatever the stress and the faulty diet <laughs> i'm sorry about that the stress stressful condition that would activate the acid secretion and also suppress this uh, mucus secretion the faulty diet in the sense uh, the containing uh, spices or the faulty eating habits 
so here i am putting in simple words like uh, hurry hurry this uh, talk, talk about the stress worry that is again um worry is about the stress the hurry and worry about the stress and hurry is uh, uh, you are eating the diet uh, um, in a fast so suddenly you are gulping gulping the food and the curry curry is the composition of the food which is uh, which is more uh, uh, spicier and uh, that would increase the acid secretion so now i have talked about the gastrinomas so these gastrinomas they are also known there is also known as what is called a jollinger uh, ellison syndrome these are the uh, the gastrinomas uh, are a gastrin secreting tumors uh, uh, present in the stomach the odenum and pancreas they secrete gastrin by secreting gastrin they increase the h ion secretion and uh, these h ions uh, will produce the ulcer so then we have what are the treatment for these peptic ulcer disease because this is one uh, we come across uh, very often so now uh, the treatment is a neutralization of acid usually the antacids or the drugs used to neutralize either uh, what we call it as a bicarbonate uh, you know you know you know or uh, uh, antacids so there are several group of antacids i am not going into the detail that try to neutralize uh, the acid component or uh, if you if somebody is consuming this um, analgesics uh, non steroidal analgesics uh, uh, inflammatory drug so now you stop them then uh, uh, you try to activate uh, or enhance the prostaglandin activity by using uh, uh, the misoprostol misoprostol uh, this is uh, not antagonist this is not uh, antagonist this is agonist so prostaglandin uh, uh, agonist antagonist will enhance so this is a prostaglandin agonist misoprostol i'm sorry about uh, this uh, mistake then blocking the acid secretion by using the serotonin or uh, histamine 2 uh, receptor antagonist h2 receptor antagonist because uh, histamine mediates the action or activates uh, uh, through the h2 receptors so now you block it by the histamine 2 receptor antagonist or nowadays uh, we often use this uh, uh, proton pump inhibitors that means you you block that uh, semen hydrogen ion pump that uh, that pump inhibitor is omeprazole or any other name agonist that inhibits this uh, hydrogen potassium atp pump so that h ion secretion is uh, uh, diminished or if you if it is due to the infection of the helicobacteria uh, then you eradicate with antibiotics and uh, if there are uh, if it is because of the tumor secreting h ions uh, gas, uh, gastrins tumor secreting gastrins uh, you uh, remove them surgically uh, gastrinomas and these are the treatment of the uh, peptic ulcer now so to summarize the entire uh, gastric um, uh, functions or the secretions uh, we have uh, uh, three regions of the stomach this is the uh, cardia and lower esophageal area this is the uh, the body and the fundus and this is the antrum and pylorus so you just see that the lower esophageal sphincter and cardia they secrete what is the secretion there mucus and bicarbonate and what is the what is the action there that prevents the reflux of entry into the gastric contents so, so this is not entry the entry is prevented GERD is because of that and uh, uh, regulate uh, belching so that means uh, the whatever we try to uh, give that uh, belching so that is uh, prevented then fundus and body so the mainly this is the secretory uh, space uh, here in this uh, it is only the regulatory and in this again uh, this would act it secretes a number of uh, enzymes and acid the h ions pepsin lipase intrinsic factor the mucus bicarbonate and gastrin all these things are secreted here and that would be one of the things and this would be for as acts as a reservoir propulsion of food liquefaction of food because the the, the food is holding in the fluid uh, in the in that environment acid environment or acid media and it gets uh, liquefied 
and hydrolyzed. So then antrum and pylorus, this is the this is the antrum and pylorus, uh, and this secretes the mucus, bicarbonate, and gastrin. And uh, their function here in the motility aspect, uh, mixing, grinding, sieving, that means filtering, and emptying the uh, emptying the food as regulated. So this is uh, uh, the the summary of the entire uh, chapter I had dealt uh, today, and um, uh, the, I, the mainly I have taken it from Genong and uh, Guyton and uh, Bernilleri, and um, the next class we will see into exocrine uh, secretion of the pancreas, and uh, I have given here. Uh, the assignment uh, for your uh, self-study. A set type question, describe the composition and function and regulation of a gastric secretion. Then in the second question, describe the mechanism of acid secretion from the stomach and various factors regulating it, add a note on peptic ulcer. Then, uh, uh, and in the short note side, I have just mentioned alkaline tide, gastrin, cephalic phase of gastric secretion, gastric phase, the motor functions of stomach, the stomach parts and their functions, list the various cells in the stomach and their functions, regulation of the uh, spyloric sphincter. So these are all the things. Uh, uh, hope uh, this uh, you will be. Uh, able to get through the stomach uh, and the gastric part uh, clear with this lecture. Uh, uh, thank you all. Thank you all.